Exactly which element is the most dangerous on Earth depends a lot on context. Firstly, the fifth element is boron, not a bioengineered doomsday weapon, and it's actually good for you. And that's the case for a lot of elements, but not all of them. There are currently 118 known chemical elements, which can roughly be divided into three kinds of danger – radioactivity, toxicity, and reactivity. Each has their own brand of doom, though reactivity is perhaps the most spectacular, as some elements can ignite spontaneously, explode, or even burn underwater. And of course, it's possible some even deadlier elements haven't yet been discovered. There are some elements that are believed to exist, but so far haven't been found, with only 98 of the current 118 elements occurring naturally. So there are a lot of variables, but given what we do know about the elements, which of them are considered to be the most dangerous? Well, that depends not just on who you ask, but when you ask them. Over the centuries, as humanity has learned more about the elements, the way we use them has changed dramatically. For instance, we now know that mercury is very bad for people. Mercury exposure has ill effects on organs, but is especially harsh on neurological systems, damaging memory, muscle control, and coordination. Back in the day, mercury was widely used by hat makers, hence Lewis Carroll's Mad Hatter, and in personal thermometers. But that has almost stopped entirely due to a better understanding of mercury's dangers. Of course, mercury is still used, and in places you might not expect, so you need to be careful. For instance, compact fluorescent light bulbs, or CFLs, are frequently touted as providing significant energy savings over run-of-the-mill incandescent bulbs. But they also contain mercury, as do other fluorescent lighting products. So you need to be mindful when they burn out and dispose of them properly to avoid any potential exposure. There are other ways to conserve energy, of course. For instance, if you don't want to use CFLs due to the mercury content, you could always try reducing your energy consumption by getting solar panels installed. But when it's time to repair or replace those panels, be warned, they may contain cadmium, a heavy metal that is carcinogenic and toxic, so that's bad. And older homes come with their own concerns. Perhaps most people know that lead-based paint was common and deadly when ingested, say as pretty flecks on the floor where a toddler can find and consume them. Did you eat a lot of paint chips when you were a kid? <laughs> Why? But did you know that Victorian wallpaper often included arsenic? And as anyone who's ever watched an old movie knows, arsenic is a very potent and deadly poison. For a gallon of elderberry wine, I take one teaspoonful of arsenic. And yet arsenic poisoning is an issue worldwide because of contaminated water sources. Sufficiently diluted, the effects won't be immediate, but the cumulative damage is extreme, including kidney failure, nausea, vomiting, and bleeding. Large doses cause death, but it's a slow, agonizing way to go. And arsenic is another example of how advancing scientific knowledge has changed how we think about the elements. Before antibiotics were developed, arsenic was actually being used as a medical treatment for syphilis. If that sounds bad, it was. So why did they try it? Because they had to find a replacement for the previous therapy used for syphilis, mercury. <laughs> but my lord, I've been in your family since 1532. So is syphilis, now get out. So what's the final answer? Well, lead, mercury, arsenic, and cadmium are all dangerous in different ways. But the most dangerous element is, luckily, one you won't find anywhere around your house. And that's a good thing, because if you did find some around your house, you'd probably die. So what is it? It is polonium. Um, we've just heard that an amount equivalent to the size of a particle of dust of polonium can be lethal. That's because polonium is roughly 250,000 times more toxic than cyanide. Luckily, though it does occur in nature, it's exceedingly rare and gives off a telltale blue glow to warn you of its presence. Thanks to its rarity, there is only one known case of a person dying from acute polonium radiation poisoning. Journalist Alexander Litvinenko, who was allegedly slipped a trace of polonium by Russian spies in 2006 and died 23 agonizing days later. So if you see that blue glow, go the other way. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.